Hi, this is Cherie with Rehash Fiber. Today I have a fun, quick pattern for you. Welcome everybody. I am always on the lookout for patterns that will work for us as the fiber artists in different ways. And one of the things I look for are quick patterns. And I have found the three hour cowl pattern by Ijioma Olu, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, of Malcolm and Marcus Designs. It is great to have a quick pattern for a few different reasons. One of my favorites is that I do have a lot of projects that take time, some up to six months, very intricate work. And so it feels like a relief to know that in one day I could just get something done and I get that good satisfaction feeling inside and so it's almost like I'm getting a reward along the way. In the midst of all these other projects, a reward. That's one good reason. Another one is, if you need to make a gift really quick, you can do this in a day. And what a nice thing that is. You have done something with your hands and the people that know you know that you love it and they love your stuff. And so you can make them a gift very quickly. So I had this fiber from Three Waters Farm that I spun to the specifics of the pattern. It calls for a heavy worsted. So that is what I did. I need 120 yards. This went over by just a little bit, so that is gonna be great. And now I'm all ready to do this pattern. I'm gonna do this for this show and time it. I'm gonna see if I can accomplish it in three hours and also anything valuable I learn or figure out along the way, I'm gonna share with you. And then we'll see how it all comes out. I've been timing this pattern on the stopwatch to see if I can in fact do it in three hours. So I'm stopping it now, doing pretty good, but I stopped it because I wanna show you a couple of things. This pattern I would consider easy. However, if you're brand new at knitting, uh, there's a couple of things that might make you think twice and I just wanna show them to you. They are the things that make this beautiful pattern through here. You start the pattern with a knit one, purl one rib for three rows. Then you go into a three round repeat, which gives you the beautiful pattern. The first round is just knitting. The second round is two yarn overs and knit. So I'm gonna show you that now. You can see I've worked into the row just a bit. But if you're new to yarn overs, you bring the yarn forward, back over the needle. That would be one. We're gonna do it one more time. Bring it forward and back over. That's two. Now we knit into the next stitch. And that is all we do all the way around. Bring forward and over once, over and again, twice, knit. Those are our two yarn overs and a knit. I'm gonna go ahead and do that all the way around the row and then I'll show you what to do next. I'm on round three now, and I've started working into the row. We're working in groups of four. This is what you would do when you first started the round. I have just worked in just a little bit. But for your first stitch, you're going to pass the two yarn overs off the needle, and you're gonna slip the knit stitch onto the right needle. You're gonna do this four times. You're gonna slip the yarn overs off, pass the stitch over, slip off, pass the stitch over for the third time, slip off, pass the stitch over for the fourth time. At this point, I like to just straighten them out, have a little look at them. Then you pass them back to your left needle. Now they're there. Now you're gonna take these two on the left and you're gonna pass them over the stitches on the right. I kinda use my thumb there to help keep that organized. So now you see their order is mixed up and that's what gives you the nice crossover. Now we're gonna knit into each one of these. And now you see how it makes that really cool X. 
I'm gonna show it to you one more time. Now you see I've made a mistake and I have made mistakes throughout this project. However, this is gonna be a cowl bunched up around a neck so I've not gotten too worried about it. I did this one row back too. I just got carried away with my yarn overs. I must have checked something and come back and just kept yarning over. So you see I've accidentally done four. It's not gonna be a problem. And I want you to know if you're doing yours and you don't mind that there might be a little mistake in there, you can just leave it. I'm gonna pass them all off. What do you know, during the demo, I know it looks like a ton of yarn, but it's gonna work out. I'm gonna pass this one over. I'm going to drop these two yarn overs, pass that stitch over, drop two, pass over, drop two, pass over. Now when we go to straighten them out, we're gonna even it out just a little. You see, it's not so terribly bad. Now I'm gonna move these four back to the left needle. And I take these two on the left over the stitches on the right. So we have that nice crisscross X there. And now I'm gonna knit into these. There you have it. I'm gonna to continue to take that on around. I finished all the rounds and the pattern says to bind off loosely. So I used to think that meant just be cognizant of not being so tight in binding off. But there is actually a technique for binding off loosely that will really help, especially when something is going over your head and you need it to have complete stretch. You need to do the bind off loosely technique. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right here. I've already started binding off a couple of the stitches. Now what you do is when you've knit your two stitches and you're passing one over to bind it off, you pass it over the stitch. Do not take it off this left stitch. You want to go into the next stitch that you're going to knit and you're gonna come through that stitch. Then you're gonna push those two off. This is gonna help your bind off be much looser. We're gonna go through that again as you would normally pass a stitch over to bind it off, do not take it off the left needle. Go into the stitch behind it as if you're to knit it. Go ahead and knit that one. Then take them both off the left needle. If you do that all the way around, you will have a nice stretchy bind off. And there you have it, it's done. And I did it in three hours and two minutes. So that was a really great project to do. It's all finished in just a little over three hours. We've got Rocky here joining us for the end of the show. It was a lot of fun to do. And like I said, it's great to finish a project in a short amount of time. For me, it was spread out over a couple of days, even though I kept that stopwatch going when I was working on it, just to be sure. So I think this is a great project. Recently, I was out traveling. And for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you saw some of the things that went on. But I went to Chicago for a graduation. On my way there, my flight took me through Philadelphia. And I was on the moving walkway. And as I'm going by, there are three great fiber art exhibits. So I got super excited. And uh, as soon as I'm off the walkway, I circled back around and took a closer look at these exhibits. So thank goodness I had time between flights because I circled back around and got a closer look at these exhibits. And then I took a variety of pictures of it. Fantastic, so much fun to see, made my day. And then I immediately turned around and shared it with you so you could see what was going on there. But I just really appreciate that when fiber art is out into the world for people to see, it's a really good thing. Then I had another experience. When I got to Chicago, my rental car line was at least 50 people deep. And I thought, huh, I could be irritable and unhappy standing in at least an hour long line, or I could pull out the drop spindle, be happy, and be making progress on something. So that's what I did. And what's funny is when I first started drop spindling in public a couple years ago, 
I felt very self-conscious because when I'm in a neutral situation that's not fiber art related, I don't want to be the center of attention. I don't like people really looking at me and thinking like, what's that lady doing? I've gotten over it and it's worth it because I stood in that line and I was happy. I'm doing what I love. I was making progress on something well and I ended up with a whole spindle full of yarn by the time I got to the front. But in the meantime, I met people. As I was spinning in line, lady looked at me and her eyes lit up. When we got close enough, she asked me what I was spinning. And I said, wool. And she said, no, what kind of wool? And right there I knew, she knew what she was talking about because we know there's tons of different breeds of sheep and all different kinds of wool. So we had a great conversation. She is a complete fiber artist. We shared what we do, experiences, people and artists we've met and dealt with, and contact information. So thanks to the drop spindle and fiber art, I made a friend in the car rental line and it turned out to be a very good experience. All right, everybody. Happy knitting and thanks for watching.